Okay. You got it? Let's get it! Hi everyone, I guess um, you're getting kind of a bonus video this week of me talking about my training stuff because I did my maxes um, this past Monday and I had some really mixed results and I had some new news or at least some new things that I learned um, what was it yesterday that is going to affect my training. Obviously I mentioned, um, sorry, uh, I noticed or I mentioned how I'm moving to Cincinnati and I'll be starting a teaching job so obviously that's going to have a big impact. I just today found a gym that I'm going to pursue looking at. It's very um, similar price to the place where I was at before and it's 24 hours and I can do all my regular stuff. I'm assuming, may have some issues with some filming, but I'm assuming if I go in at odd hours and I don't get in the way of people, uh, most people don't care if you film, especially if it's just of me, because why would they care if I'm sitting there recording one of my deadlifts? <laughs> but um, I guess we'll find out. Either way, um, I, it seems like a good gym, and it's about 30 minutes from where my apartment is, so it's a pretty accessible place. But um, outside of that, my maxes were a very odd day, and I made a video right after I did my maxes when I got home kind of ranting about it, but I'm not going to post that because I found out some more information that's going to change um, about that. I did cut down to the 181, um, 181 pounds. I was like 181.2 or whatever, and it was like 181.8 was the highest that I could be. So I was under that. Um, I, I did that the evening before, and then I did the lifts that next morning. I was able to get a PR on squats at uh, 425 pounds. I failed 435 a couple times, and um, bench I was able to do 295 uh, pounds come with my butt coming off the bench, and then I was able to do 290 with my butt on the bench. So that's a 10 pound lifetime PR and a 15 pound, I guess, at that body weight. But deadlifts went really weird. Um, I was able to get 540 and then I failed 570 twice and then I just left. I think a big issue that I had was really my squat mechanics. I essentially did a good morning to get the weight up and if you're watching this, you'll see a, a video clip of me doing it. Um, the 425 was very, very bad. It was after I did the 435 for two attempts and failed them both. Um, so I was already fatigued. Um, but I was essentially just letting my torso collapse and that was not an optimal way and something I really need to fix as I move forward um, because I really think that had a huge impact on my deadlifts by not allowing me to be able to even grind out 570 uh, because a couple weeks before I did 565 for a double and so uh, not being able to hit that um, 570 was quite demoralizing and after that um, I don't want to say a fried CNS because there are lots of different opinions on that and I don't really buy into it that much, but my mom, because I drove home that day to get something, my mom um, said that my forehead had like a rash on it and I looked weird. Well, I guess that made me look weird, but it, she said it wasn't like I had acne, it was just like a rash so I really think I overly strained myself doing the squats and I need to be more cogn cognizant of that in the future to not try it too many times or do it in the way that I did so I'm not burning myself out for deadlifts I don't think my back was affected um, from doing any of the bench stuff because I was still able to PR fine um, I really think it was the way I squatted was not optimal in the slightest for um, doing deadlifts after um, so I really need to fix that. Um, I will be working a lot on keeping my torso more upright, whether I'm doing high bar or low bar, um, to allow for that. Because I do think that my torso will naturally collapse forward a little bit as I um, start getting to higher weights, much like my back will round as I get to higher weights for deadlift. I just want to limit that as much as possible and not train in that way as much as possible, obviously, so I can prevent injury and train optimally. Um, some adjustments that I'm going to make for the deadlift specifically, I'm going to do more stiff leg deadlifts and more rows to kind of work on my back and hamstrings a little bit. Um, I think that will, those will be my main accessories for the time being. And I'll be trying to use a stiff bar as much as I can um, just so I can get that feel and train with it more because I do think it makes it a slightly a little bit more difficult. So if it's a little bit more difficult, I should get a little more uh, training stimulus out of it. And for my squats, I want to, what I was doing before was high bar until I got fatigued and moved to low bar. And I think that's part of the reason why I tended to be more leaned over when I was maxing out just because I had trained that way. So I had those mechanics to depend on my back as my legs got tired from doing high bar squats. Um, so I want what I want to do is to not necessarily alternate, but do on different days 
um, high bar and low bar depending on what I want to focus on that day so I can train at the lighter weights and as I get to the heavier weights all in one specific um, motion because they are slight they aren't drastically different you know motions but they are slightly a little bit different uh, so I want to focus on that I may still be doing it in the same workouts if I have multiple squats but it will either be all low bar and then all high bar it won't be mixed in into um, the same kind of block I guess of squats or whatever so I think um, doing that will allow me to get the practice of using optimal form as I move up to heavier weights and allow me to keep it easier as I move forward and hopefully I'm able to just constantly improve my mechanics I don't think it's something I mean I, I couldn't get 570 and I don't think that it's something that I'm overly concerned about I didn't get the 600 pounds like I wanted um, and now like I just lifted today and I cut down a lot of stuff because it's kind of I, I guess a reloading workout where I'm trying to get some volume back in but I just did um, some some things I guess it was quite a bit but not as much as I was originally planning because my back was really really tight and I think that um, just gives me more evidence that the way that I was squatting was just putting a ton of extra strain on my back and essentially I was doing a good morning um, to get the weight up which is obviously not optimal to do maximal weights so I want to get my legs into it as much as I can especially when I'm training I can good morning a little bit when I'm maxing out because I can kind of yeah just like when you round your back it's not optimal but you're going to do it a little bit so I want to limit it as much as possible in my training um, so I do have room to move or to do that in the future if, you know my backgrounds or if I lean forward a little bit I have a little bit of room to do that but um, the way I was squatting, to, it was basically right to then, and it was the same way when I was um, deadlifting, it was like straight, my back was rounded entirely as soon as I lifted the weight up, and there was just no chance of me trying to get it up unless I just hurt, just did something and probably hurt myself if I was trying to do it. But I think the deadlifts are really affected by uh, my squats, and I, I something I just need to fix in the future. It's 100% my fault. I don't want this video to sound like I am making excuses for myself. I really should have performed better. <laughs> and I was still able to PR on the squat at that body weight. The 425 is five pounds less than my lifetime PR, but I was 181 the day before, so it was a um, it was like a 13 pound PR at that body weight. And then bench was 15 or 14 and a half pound PR at that body weight, and then a 10 pound lifetime PR. So it was still a good day. I just didn't perform optimally on the deadlifts. But the other news I do want to bring up, and I'm sorry if I'm talking for very long, you might just be seeing my face now. But the way the online powerlifting meet is working, the first lift in this week is a snatch. So I'm assuming the next week is going to be um, clean and jerks, and then they'll move into the power lift. So that gives me two more weeks. Uh, to spread out before I can try those lifts again if I wanted. What I will be doing is I already changed it on the website, but I'm moving up to the 198 weight class because I'm not going to cut down again, especially at the beginning of the school year. No way I'm going to be trying to do a cut at that point of my teaching career when I'm worrying about you know getting all the teaching stuff done because I'll have lots of time to worry about cutting and all that stuff in the future. What I'll be doing is just trying to keep probably about 188 to 190 pounds. I was like 187, so no more than 190. Um, and I'll just be doing my maxes individually as I move forward. Um, I'll be doing them separately. Um, I most likely won't go crazy on the squats. I would like to do the 425 again with much cleaner form and much better form than I did on the video. And you can see it was very, very just horrendous form but I got it up I guess if you want to say that um, but it was very ugly and very horrible and bench I think I could do the 295 with clean form if I did it again because I was kind of awkward on the way down and it still I was still able to get it up even though it was a grind I think that was just more of the bar placement didn't allow me to get in an optimal position because of how um, well 290 and 285 moved so I would like to try um, 295 again and see if I can do that with clean form as well as the deadlift I would like to try to at least get more than five I, I mean right now it's like it, it's um, I have to at least get 570 and then anything more than that will be golden and I can get back into just full-time just worrying about training um, ideally I would like to get 600 but obviously I failed 570 so the first goal is to get that 570 and then I can try um, that 600 but that will be a couple weeks down the road thankfully and that will give me a lot of time to recover and a little bit of training in um, to do that and I'll be able to turn those lifts as I do them. Um, so I most likely won't be competitive in the 198 weight class. I wasn't probably going to be competitive in the 181, but my, all my numbers would have looked better if they were there. Um, so the numbers, if I'm not able to do more than 425 squats um, or more than 290 a bench, those will be my two for those. And I assume I'll be able to at least get 570 on the deadlift. 
Um, I can't imagine that I'll get stuck at that again, especially if I'm doing it um, separately by itself. Um, so hopefully I'm able to get that. The only negative, well, well I guess the one benefit of having to wait a couple of weeks for the deadlift is that I tore a callus off my thumb doing the hook grip because I was just herky jerking around and it just ripped off a callus. So I have had a big hole in my hand and thankfully it's healing pretty quick. So as that gets more healed, I'll be able to train the hook grip a little bit more. I'll be using the stiff bar a lot um, up until then obviously and, and continually during um, I guess more of my off season training. Um, but I'm excited. I'm moving. I'm recording this on Thursday. I'm moving tomorrow. So I'll be all moved into my apartment on Friday. Won't be training or anything. I'll just be moving in and unpacking and um, doing some school stuff. Perhaps going to my school uh, to start packing up some stuff from the old teacher that was there um, in that classroom. And then perhaps Saturday and Sunday and perhaps on Monday. Um, I get like a three-day trial at my the place that I'm looking at um, getting a membership at. I'm pretty sure I will unless it's some horrible place, but it seems like a pretty nice place. Um, assuming that all goes well, I'll go there a couple days on the weekend to get some more training. And then probably that Monday will be the first day I start um, all of my full, full stop training again as I move forward. Um, today I did, it was the Shaco program that I have, it's like number 29. I did the first day I just cut off some stuff. So I wasn't killing myself because my back was really, really sore. Not painful, thankfully. It was just like that muscular soreness and it just makes everything more difficult. Um, but it did provide a good cue when I was doing squats because you could really feel it and really focus on staying more upright. But anywho, I won't ramble on. <clears throat> Ooh, I think I'm losing my voice. That's not good. Um, maybe I'm not or I am just have a dry throat. Anywho, I won't ramble on for too much more about random things like my throat. Um, but... I would appreciate your comments down below. I'm, I'm, I haven't decided yet if I want to post all my failed lifts. I probably won't, um, just because I hate looking at them. And frankly, if it was as simple as me just clicking and sharing, I probably would. But I have to go and like edit them. I really don't want to look at them again, um, because I was so annoyed that day. And, and honestly, the deadlifts, my back just rounded and I got stuck at you know at like my knee level. It wasn't anything crazy. It's where I've usually failed before. And it was 100% because my back was, you know, just complete cat, as you see in some of those videos. You're just completely gone. Um, so I had very little chance unless I was willing to just go crazy and try to injure myself. And I wasn't willing to. But like I said, I'm not going to rant on for too much more as I rant on for too much more. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching and have a wonderful day. And the one last thing I will say will be a regular video on Monday talking about my training from this week. So don't worry about that. Now I'm done. <laughs> I'm